Hi everyone, myself Dr. Saiti, Team MDS Conquer. So, the next important topic from your anatomy is the maxillary sinus for your basics paper. So, we will be discussing this in this particular presentation. So, first the contents include for this particular topic if it comes as an essay it is always better to write the contents. So, which include the introduction, development, microscopic features, anatomy, the blood supply, the lymph uh, lymphatic drainage, the nerve supply, the relations to the adjacent structures followed by the functions and the applied aspects. Okay? Lastly, the conclusion and references. So, this is how you have to write the contents. So, let us start the introduction. So, it is also called as a maxillary antra or antra of hymor and it becomes apparent by the 17th day in, in utero or intrauterine life it becomes apparent by the 17th day itself. So, it is a paid sinus, it is largest paranasal sinus and it is present within the maxillary bone. So, this is how you can start the introduction. So, coming to the development, so it is exactly, I have given the exact sequence of how it is being developed. So, please do note it. So, if you write it as a flow chart by keeping arrows in between, it is very much fetching. Okay? So, the development initially, it follows a morpho morphogenic events in the differentiation of the nasal cavity. Later, horizontal shift of the palatal shelves occur, followed by the fusion of cells with one another. Followed by that, nasal septum separates the oral cavity from the two sections of the nasal chambers. Then, presumably influences the expansion of the lateral nasal wall and the wall again begins to fold followed by which the three nasal concave and the three nasal or the sub adjacent meatus are being formed. The inferior and the superior meatus remain like a shallow depressions in the first in half of the intrauterine life and later the middle meatus expand into the lateral uh, nasal wall. So, the inferior and the superior meatus actually remain like the uh, shallow depressions whereas, the middle meatus actually expands into the lateral nasal wall. Then the cartilaginous uh, skeleton of the lateral nasal capsule exactly gets established followed by that expansion of the middle meatus into occurs in a inferior direction which is occupying more of the maxillary bone and at the end the maxillary sinus gets established. So, this is how you have to write the descriptive sequence. So, the entire sequence you can follow which is given in, in this particular presentation or you can have a look in your in the basing or your embryology textbook. Okay? So, at birth actually it is the size of a small p then it starts increasing in its size. So, about 7 to 8 mm anteroposteriorly, 3 to 4 mm mediodistally, 4 to 6 mm high and 6 to 8 mm in volume. So, it again if the teeth starts erupting it descends downwards. Okay? So, it is tubular at birth. So, this shapes it is very good if you write. So, it is actually it is tubular shape in, in the birth, ovoid in childhood and pyramidal in adults. Okay? The shapes of the maxillary sinus you need to mention. Okay, ultimately, uh, the size exactly determines or it depends upon the hereditary factors. So, it actually continues to go throughout the life. So, next coming to the microscopic features, it has three distinct layers. So, we are done with the development part. So, development of maxillary sinus is very important. So, you have to write the sequence followed by the how it is uh, uh, size at the birth and also the shape at the birth followed by the shape at the childhood and the adults. So, all this you need to mention. Later, you have to write the microscopic features which has three distinct layers that is epithelial layer, the basal lamina and the sub epithelial layer. So, the epithelium is actually pseudo stratified, columnar or ciliated and it is derived from the olfactory epithelium and it provide motile apparatus to the sinus epithelium. The cilia actually provide the motile apparatus to the epithelium of the sinus. Okay, this is little microscopic features. Next coming, coming to the anatomy. So, here you have to end the microscopic features now. Then you have to enter to the anatomy. You can draw a diagram of showing the nasal cavity as well as the sinuses, the paid sinuses in the pyramid shape. Okay? So, the anterior wall is the facial structure of the or the facial surface of the maxilla. Intraorbital canal diffracts uh, the roof onto the anterior wall and it is related to the facial surface of the cheek by the canine fossa as seen in the diagram. Later the roof, it is a thin orbital plate of the maxilla which separates the orbit and contents from the sinus. Okay? It is the roof, 
So, we are done with the anterior wall and the roof and next coming to the base, it forms a medial wall of the antrum, it separates from the nasal cavity, it is usually thin and it is convex towards the sinus and where it forms an aperture uh, called as a hiatus semilunaris and it is reduced in size by thick mucosa of the nasal cavity. So, this is the base. Next coming to the floor, floor is nothing but the alveolar part of the maxilla. So, the adults 4 to 5 mm below the floor of the nose, the children it corresponds to that of the nasal flow. The roots of the maxillary teeth we know it provide uh, or it produce elevations into the flow. When we see a uh, in a radiograph we can see the maxillary uh, molar roots are being elevated within the flow. So, that is nothing but the floor of the maxillary sinus. So, you have to write the anterior wall, the roof, the base and the floor. Next coming to the ostium of the antrum, so it opens into the nasal cavity and it is situated at the highest part of the medial wall and it opens in via uh, middle meatus and it varies in its shape, ok. This you have to write again and coming to the blood supply, it is the superior alveolar branch of the maxillary artery and the branches of the greater palatine artery and the venous drainage is from the pterygoid plexus. The lymphatic drainage through ostium into the nasal cavity and uh, infraorbital foramen ultimately it goes to the submandibular lymph nodes. So, uh, this is how you have to write the lymphatic drainage ok and next coming to the relationships so superiorly to the orbit and its contents, medially to the nasal cavity and inferiorly that is below to the maxillary molars and also the alveolar process of the maxilla. So, this is how you have to write a detailed anatomy of the main structure of the maxillary sinus, its lymphatic drainage, its blood supply and its relations. So, coming to the functions, functions is like it lightens the skull weight, the important function and also it is resonator and it modifies the voice. So, it acts as a resonator and it modifies the voice, ok. So, next also it serves as an insulator to prevent the cold air from cooling down the surrounding parts and it helps in shaping the front part of the skull and positioning the orbit orbits in a binocular vision and it provides thermal uh, insulation for the brain and also increase the area of olfactory membrane. So, all these are the functions you can just write one line functions no need to give any description is only for your uh, knowledge sake I have written here, but it is of no need only the important uh, the one which is given in yellow color if you write it is more than enough ok. The other functions are besides all these it includes uh, some sort of shock absorbers for the skull and also it secretes mucus to keep the nasal cavity moist and it helps in flotation of the skull in the water. So, these are the various different functions of the maxillary sinus you have to write it, even if it is asked in anatomy question you have to write the functions it will increase the bulk of the answer as well as it will fetch your marks ok. Draw the diagrams if you can draw the diagrams along with the relations if you can explain by neat label diagram it will be re really attractive to the examiner ok. So, next coming to the developmental anomalies it you can write just name these three the agenesis, the aplasia and the hypoplasia ok. Later you have to write the inflammatory conditions the sinusitis the famous uh, or the most commonly seen uh, condition is the maxillary sinusitis. So, what could be the inflammatory conditions and what could be the non infectious like the allergy or any exposure to chemicals and all that. So, you can write the infectious as well as non infectious causes of the maxillary sinusitis and also you can give a mild description of the symptoms like the patients will have heaviness over the sinus and when he bends the head he has more of pain or pressure on the sinus and also he has radiating pain over the uh, maxillary molar roots of the maxillary molar. So, all those symptoms you can uh, write ok. So, in, increase the size of your answer. So, that is it students. So, you can write these references. In conclusion you can write the maxillary sinus is a pyramidal structure which is present in the maxillary or in the face mid middle part of the face which is very important and you can write bit of its functions and you can end up the answer ok. And then you can give these references if you can code any article if you have gone through any article or uh, related to maxillary sinusitis you can write rest if these references are enough and even if you can write the Gray's anatomy as well. So, but any two textbooks and two articles are enough for the basics paper ok.